Please order. Welcome to the visitors. Welcome. Additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, I need to add one item, number nine, under section C would be for senior release. items on there except there's no budget report yet uh, being early in the year same thing with the activity fund report um, no gifts and donations this month um, the special ed assessments uh, this is just a formality to approve the, uh, that we approve those assessments this is a once a year item uh, and then the petty cash adjustment uh, we need a little more room in the activity fund to make sure we've got cash to do things. Uh, we don't need much in the district account, so that's that last item there. Okay. Mr. President, I'll move the board to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? <laughs> On all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6-0. Any patron comments tonight? Right, we'll move on to the budget hearing. <coughs> Go ahead and open the hearing. Any comments? Okay. There's uh, one minor adjustment on the Recreation Commission. Um, the mill levy is slightly lower than what was published. Uh, expense amounts are the same, just the uh, calculations there uh, with the taxes collected is a little bit lower than what was published everything else is the same uh, you do have your uh, annual budget document report there um, these are available in the district office and on our website so here's yours for this year I thought it was well put together all right no comments we'll go ahead and close the budget hearing and return to regular session Moving on to the business portion of the meeting. Board goal setting for 2014-15 school year. I'm going to turn it over now to Gary Seacrest. He's, uh, I'll just let him tell you about it himself. <laughs> You're afraid uh, to introduce me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Gary Seacrest with KASB, and I appreciate the opportunity to come and work with you. And I applaud you for uh, wanting to work on board goals, and hopefully that you'll understand the importance of those on the direction that you want to move with your district and obviously improve the situation uh, for your students, staff, and your community. Um, I have worked with KSB now for a year. I'm a retired superintendent, and you're thinking, gosh, how can you retire when you're 38 years old? It's not the case, Josh. <laughs> Some of you I've got to work with. I happened to be on the superintendent search when Mr. Meyer was hired here, so I've known. Actually, he came and watched me one day when I was a principal, and he still decided to get into administration <laughs> after that particular day. We're going to get right into business, but I would like to uh, go through a few things to explain what we're going to do. Mr. Meyer says that you presently have five goals, of which we will look at. Uh, I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag. He feels they are his goals. I'm sure you've seen them, but he would like to have some board feedback. So we're going to look at the goals that are existing, and then before we're done with the day, we will have potentially either new goals. It could be the same five. Could be two of those and two more, whatever. But we're going to look at those and then uh, analyze where we're at on those. And Mr. Meyer, I may have you speak of those at some point to uh, let the board know where you feel like the progress has been, if there has been or has not been. So moving on, what will we learn today? We're going to set goals today, but there's some things that you need to be aware of as a board that it's very important that you all have a common vision. You have a mission and that you have some goals. 
we refer to you as the grade eight. You have the board of education of seven, and you have the superintendent of one, so we have the grade eight team. And we make an assumption, unless we hear otherwise, that this is a highly functioning team, of which we believe it is. The reason I want you to know what the key work of the board is, is because the most important part of that is continuous improvement and setting the vision for the board, or for the district, excuse me. So that will be what you will be doing tonight. The research shows that there are several items that matter the most in the school district. And before we set goals, I want to make sure you understand what matters most in the school district. Because if you're setting a goal that doesn't matter to students or to your district, we believe you're wasting your time on that goal. So we want to make sure that you understand what matters most, the research shows. We're going to do what we call a SWOT analysis. We want you to tell us what your strengths of your district is, your weaknesses, what opportunities may be out there, and what threats to your district. That opens your mind up to some potential goals. So this is what we would like to call a holy environment. If you had patrons in here, you'd be able to say it, uh, but you can say what you need to say at this point. Uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That will be a brainstorm session that we'll do together. We will evaluate the present goals that you have, and I think that Mr. Meyer has put those in front of you, but I'm going to give you what I will call a worksheet in a little bit. And then once we evaluate the present goals, then we will establish some new board goals. And as I said, it may include all of these, may not include some of those, or maybe some different ones. So we'll go through that and see where it, where it goes. So without a clear vision, and it's all too easy for a school district to wander in their work. And I always use this as an example just because I've been a school person for many, many years. Obviously, having great coaches is a good thing, but if you're spending a lot of time about whether you should hire or fire a specific coach, you know, that becomes the most important thing. And the most important thing is having goals which move the needle for your students. So your district goals are presently this. Provide adequate resources for technology and classrooms. Ensure students have access to quality programs, opportunities, and resources. Provide for well-maintained, updated, and safe facilities. Recruit and retain a highly effective staff. And maintain updated board policies and procedures. So those were established in some manner last year, I believe. So I'm going to give you a little worksheet here. And while I'm doing that, I'd like the board to think about this question. What do you believe, what is your definition of continuous improvement? We believe that's one of the most important things that a school board can do. So if you can see in the upper right, I've given you an opportunity, and I sure ask that uh, you consider writing your definition of continuous improvement, and then hopefully you would be willing to share with your board what you believe continuous improvement is. And Mr. Meyer, I'm going to ask you to participate in that part of it. And I'll give that to you. Is everybody, every board member have one? Didn't expect to have to work today, did you, sir? <laughs> you don't have to, sir, please. And I will, all the stuff that you use tonight, I will send to Mr. Mark. I feel like you have to arrange it much better. So, what is your definition of continuous improvement? We are in the mode of continuous improvement this evening, I believe. the superintendent we're doing this so I always ask the superintendent first and then usually I ask for volunteers. Mr. Meyer are you willing to share with the board your definition of continuous improvement? You had enough time? Um, yeah I, for me that's uh, getting better at meeting the needs of all kids. Okay so you're you're getting better probably is the key word there and then obviously you're your kids that's why you're here. Would anybody else be willing to share their definition of continuous improvement? Um, Mine is uh, 
keeping up with the changing educational programs and, and materials. Good. So that infers you're wanting to get better if you're keeping up with all of the new ideologies and pedagogy and materials, which it looks like you have great materials. Anybody else from the board? That's what I've got basically. Always looking for new ways to educate students. Absolutely. Great. Looking for new ways, improved ways. Anybody else? Well, continue providing a safe, clean environment for the students to learn their those Good. abilities. Improvement infers that you're always looking for a better way to do something. And you are well on your way by trying to establish goals, not trying, but establishing goals this evening to direct you into a continuous improvement mode. So the board sets the vision to the district. So here's the key work. I'm going to briefly go over those. There's eight items, and these are the things that are the key work of school boards. Now, these are pretty broad. And I'm going to start with standards. And we believe at the end you're going to see that we believe that vision and continuous improvement are probably the key work of the board. But you have to think about this. Standards. Now, if there were some teachers in here, they'd say, oh, what standards are we teaching? But in a board sense, by what standards do you operate? Once you have the goal set, are you thinking about those at all times of creating some sort of a standard within your district of which you can operate to achieve those goals? The next one is assessment. Once again, if a teacher was in here or a principal, they would think, oh gosh, the student assessments. But what we're looking at is how do you, how do you as a district assess your success or possibly the items that you're not having success with? How do you assess your goals? that you're making progress on your goals. So having goals, never talking about your goals, never asking Mr. Meyer for a progress report, you're obviously not assessing those. Accountability. Now, you're going to have board goals. Now, don't think of these as the superintendent's goals. Now, they're the ones that are going to get their hands dirty to make sure it gets happening. But you need to have some sort of accountability. Obviously, you're holding the superintendent accountable to get your goals or whatever it is. The superintendent is holding the principals accountable. The, count, the principals are holding the teachers accountable. And the teachers are holding the students accountable. So you have to, and I'm not saying that you have to have your thumb on the superintendent all the time. It's pretty hard to work when you're squished. But you need to ask for reports on a regular occasion so that he monitors the progress of the goals. You assess them or evaluate progress of the goals. Alignment. How's your district aligned? I'll just make a guess here that you wanted to improve fourth grade reading scores. I know that's not that specific, but let's just say a what if. That you had a board goal to improve fourth grade reading scores. And last year you decided after a lot of study, you had some teacher work groups, you had your principals, and they decided they were going to do this and it was going to cost $12,000. Is your, did you align your district to provide the resources available for that $12,000, or the time for the teachers to do that. So how are you allocating your resource and aligning those so that your goals can be achieved? If you say we want to do this special program but we can't buy it next year, but go do it, you're not aligning yourself to get it done. So your standards, you know, you, you've already set a standard to not get it done within your system. Climate, very, another word for that is culture. It has been proven that if the top four that were the first four that we talked about, if St. John 350 is the best district in the state in standards, assessment, accountability, and alignment, but if you don't have a good culture or climate within your district, it trumps all of the good stuff you're doing. So it's very important that you have a great culture, and that starts with the board. You know, they're open, willing to work at what you say is important, and you create the climate for that. Collaborative partnerships, I can see this working in St. John. Uh, you have a very finite number of folks within your district. But what if you wanted to have the best welding program in the state? You're starting a new pathway, but you don't have a teacher. Do you have some sort of business in the district that has great welders that you could partner with? That's just a what if. But you can't do it yourself. You have to look at collaborative partnerships. I know an example of a, uh, a, a large district uh, five a, two 5A high schools recently that the new superintendent went out just to go 
make contact with the business owners. He was there was no alternative motive, just wanted to start meeting them. So first month, went and talked to a paving company. They called him the next day and said, sir, we'd like to pave your parking lots. And he said, well, I, from what I understand, that's on our long range goal. We can't do that quite yet, but we're working to financially to get that done. And he said, no, we'd like to pave your lots. We'd like to create a collaborative partnership. And then some of the equipment that we take, we'd like to be able to train your kids on that. So at some point, they would have the skills to get into this type of business. That's a great example of collaborative partnerships. Now, wouldn't that be awesome if that could work in St. John Hudson that way? That was just a blind thing that happened. And then, obviously, what we've, tried, what we've put up there is vision and continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. And if the board has in a mode of continuous improvement and willing to set the vision, then you're well on your way to doing what's necessary for the improvement of your school district. So we've talked about the key work. You are excellent at the key work now. You know those eight things so well that if I asked you to say them, you could. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to. I know all of, all of you started looking to see if it was on your worksheet. <laughs> you didn't. You weren't too worried. No. <laughs> I just didn't fail. <laughs> all right, so now you know what the key work is. But what if the Board of Education doesn't know the key work? Now think about this in your small community. If something happens bad, I almost guarantee if you're at the grocery store, that parent is going to be in the line with you at that time. Or when you go to church on Sunday morning, I almost guarantee that that parents in your Sunday school class. That happens in small communities. But if you know the key work, it can help you in that regard. So if the Board of Education doesn't know the key work, then everything becomes important. And if everything is important, then the Board attempts to do everything. And if the Board tries to do everything, then the patrons expect you to do what's not important. And in trying to please everybody, then you don't have time to do the key work. Now, Superintendent, I should put you up there also. It's real easy to get pulled and pushed different directions. But keep your mind on the key work. The big picture. All too often, boards of education want to be like firefighters on the ground battling the flames. That should be your superintendent. They're the ones that need to get their hands dirty. You are the ones that need to be up at that 10,000 foot view and seeing what's happened within your district, creating the vision. Let your administrators get their hands dirty. You create the vision, tell them what the vision is, let them get to work. Roles made simple. Now why am I telling this? When you get goals, remember now we've asked Josh to get into the weeds. He's the one that's going to get dirty. So the roles made simple. The board is strategic. You're creating the vision. The administration is tactical. You say what we're going to do, and they decide how to get it done. And then your faculty and staff is operational. Now I'm not military, but I really love history, so let's put it in military terms. None of you are an Eisenhower by yourself, but as a board, let's call you the collective Eisenhower. On June 6, 1944, there was a big event, uh, the invasion of Normandy, D-Day. So the board, the collective Eisenhowers, strategically said we need to get a lot of troops on the ground we need to do that. I'm not sure exactly how we need to do that, but lieutenants, majors, everybody, here's what we need to do. You decide how it's going to get done. So they decide to cross the English Channel with millions of folks and invade France. And then unfortunate, the unfortunate souls are the faculty and staff that make it operational. So you're setting the vision. The superintendent and his delegates are figuring out how to get it done. So in terms, you want to have quality programs, hopefully at some point you have those defined if these are your goals. You've set the vision on what you want to do. Now it's Mr. Meyer and his people to decide what those are, how to do it, and how to get it done. So now we're at the SWOT analysis. So now I'm going to make you think. In front of you, you can see a little four matrix where I have strengths. But right now, just on an individual basis, you can come up with a couple of items on what you believe, and please make this have the most items on this. You know, I don't want your weaknesses to have 28 and only 12 on your strengths. But what strengths do you have in USD 350? The things you're proud of. Okay, so take a couple minutes to yourself, write those down, and then we'll report out and put it on the, the sheet.
start concluding your thoughts. Give you a couple more seconds just to do the strengths right now. Mr. Fisher, I won't do this to you on the other three, but um, I would ask you if you would, what's, what's one strength that you would like everybody to know about? About our school? Yes, sir. We have um, <clears throat> strong faculty. Great. And I probably didn't explain this very well, but if, it's, if you would like to have a strength about your community, it doesn't necessarily have to be a school related. I don't know all of your names, but I would like everybody to have the opportunity, and Josh, I'm going to bypass you on this. Yeah. Sir, do you have a strength that you'd like to share? Um, I, I basically said uh, we got good buildings and improving them all the time. Good. Sir, right here in the corner. I have teachers, uh, facilities, and administrators. Just one, so I'm going to put administrators. <laughs> Cheater. He wanted to make sure to get it all in there. <laughs> Ma'am, how about you? One strength. Uh, I feel that we have we have a lot of accomplished students and alumni. It's nice to hear. Good. Accomplished students and alumni. That's neat to hear. Sorry. Did I not say that? No, you did. Wait. Uh, good answer. Huh? Let me guess, all of you are alumni here? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I have not Good Thank try. You. Sir, how about you? Uh, we have a safe environment. Excellent. Great. <clears throat> Wonderful. Sorry. Sir. Uh, I'll go with the uh, sense of community. Sense of community, that's where you have. Board President, I'll give you another opportunity. Did something you wrote down has not yet been mentioned. Well, it kind of piggybacks off Stan. I had community pride. Great. That's wonderful. That is. You can't use it again. All right. <laughs> There's some boards I work with, and that's their goal. How can we unify our community and district better than what we are? Well, Sir, how about you? To work on too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mine are some of the same as the others. I mean, I okay. had quality energetic teachers. But Which we have that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Sir, on the corner here, anything? I don't that you, have anything you else. Don't? Okay. Now, I hope weaknesses has a smaller number in this. <laughs> Ma'am, how about you? Um, you know, the goals that we set last year, I felt that we uh, are working towards achieving Good. them. So, so I think uh, that... Uh, Working towards goals. At yeah, for now. Are. Wonderful. That's, I'm glad to hear that. It's always an improvement, but they're never completed. But you bet. I think we're working Sir? with them. Yeah, I think mine are pretty much up there. I needed another 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noted for that. I never give you enough time. And I know the 30 seconds in between every pair of turns you, did, you probably didn't use effectively. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had good parents. But good, good parents. I think that's a great one. Parents, that is a great one. Good one. All right, sir. Well, I, I think there's a strength in being small. It is, absolutely. It is. Of course, I will use that same one again on weakness. Yeah, I was going to say, you will see a lot of these know. that also can be on the weakness. Yes, just, just to let you know, it's already over there. On the uh, absolutely right. Okay, any board member that did not have an opportunity to get one up here that uh, they would like, didn't, have a, didn't give them enough opportunity, you had a third or a fourth one. Mr. Meyer, I just you don't have to, but is there something up here that you feel like didn't make the list that you wish would have? Uh, good kids. Good kids. All right. Thank you for not saying too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, there's another one. Great board of education. There's another one that you need to say before the night's over. No, I just, just said. I just did. Good uh, board. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah. <laughs> he caught it. Make it time. All right, so now I'm going to give you at least 30 seconds uh, to write down the weaknesses of your community, school district. You going to go ahead and put mine down on there? No, I'm going to wait till we get to your turn. I'll start with you. How about that? That's, that's fine. <laughs>
Okay, to start concluding your thoughts, if you would, please. Okay, sir, I will give you the opportunity, but how would you like that to be said? Small community, small school district? Well, uh, there's a couple different things that would go into that, but uh, uh, small in, in that you can't um, offer everything that a larger right. district could. That's one way. Absolutely. And then I have another for the next time around. Unless somebody gets it, and then you're really in trouble, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Now, you've got 30 seconds to think of another one, just in case. I'm going to let you go first, so you can have your say. <laughs> okay. Say. Uh, how about lack of jobs in our small community? Yes, okay. Ma'am, how about you? The financial. Yeah, okay. Sir, in the corner here. This, this may be too specific, but our janitorial staff. No, it's not. If it's something that you feel like you need to deal with. Now, just because you all may know more than I do, and maybe you don't want to go more detailed, do you want to? Does everybody know what that means when he says janitorial staff? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get any more detail than that. All right. Sir, what about you? Um, this kind of despise put it down, but at the same token, because we're all human, um, sometimes we forget we are a team. Yes, thank you. Good. I mean, I think we do a pretty good job as a team, but at the same token, once in a while, we kind of forget. You know, that's wonderful that it's brought up, because, you know, it's real easy. When you've got seven of you, you're all wise, you all have a lot of intelligence, your teachers are the same way, and you need to work as a team, so it's easy to go the other way. Mr. President. Um, most of them have been said, but limited programs we can Sure, offer. you bet. Sure. I have nothing. You were pretty excited about your second one. <laughs> wow, does that mean Van Fancel over here, you know, he, he, we were kind of thinking on the same. You must be. You guys are really smart, obviously. Att attracting people. <laughs> so, Sir, how about you? How about... Quality homes. Yes, you bet. Housing. Housing. Yeah. It'd be amazing what I how I hear that. Ma'am, how about you? Anything else you'd like to add? I think like a lot of communities, you know, you still fight the drug and alcohol. Sure, you bet. And your students. And <laughs> homelessness. Yeah. So. I'll go ahead and write that down. Isn't that amazing that a district the size of yours has homeless students, which everybody does? Yeah. Sir, do you got anything you'd like to add? I don't have anything. Okay. Sir? No. All right. Mr. Meyer, anything that you would like uh, to add? Aging to facilities. Aging facilities? Okay. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to have to get it between you, all right? <laughs> Anything I just stand in the bathroom all the time. Uh, just a rural, yeah, yeah it's kind of been hit on. Very, yeah. very rural. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to draw young teachers to a rural area. Yeah. They, they think it's exciting, they go to the larger town. I've got to tell you, we were doing weaknesses here about six weeks ago in another district. And I know the board really well, and I know the superintendent really well. And we happened to be in weaknesses. The superintendent got a phone call, so he stepped out, one of the board members said, right superintendent, right superintendent. <laughs> So we wrote superintendent, of course he walks in and saw <laughs> We Everybody did a back trot there. Now, opportunities. Let me try to give you an example of an opportunity and I'll get on the slides there to show you. But I want you to be aware that opportunities, or for an example, the flour mill in Hudson is expanding. Wouldn't that be awesome that you've got a 25 new employees, and half of those have children, and they're coming to your school district. And it is expanding. Wonderful. I didn't know that. But I knew about the flour mill. I knew Hudson Green Flour. It's But now opportunities are something that you feel you have some control over. Now, I know you don't have control over that, but maybe your chamber did a great job of creating some incentives for that. So opportunities are things that you feel like you may have some control over, in your district. So uh, once again, I'll give you some time to write down some opportunities. I do admit opportunities and threats are more difficult 
to think of. But it's sure important for you to all get that out. seconds to finalize your thoughts. Ma'am, we'll start with you. Do you have anything that you would like to share that you would consider an opportunity for your school district? Well, it's kind of a, it's like um, the bad and the good. We have several teachers that are retiring that sure, will bring in young yeah. teachers that will Filling with young teachers. Absolutely. And hopefully they marry and create a family and stay here forever. That's everybody's hope. Start right here on the corners. Is there an opportunity right. that you would like to share? I don't know if this would count, but our county has an economic development. Oh, that's great. That's bet. That. You bet. we have an opportunity to strengthen our community. You bet. Uh, and do you mean that through with the school district assisting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Mr. Mars had a fire pride night coming up. That's great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Sir. Explain the question to me again. You bet. So an opportunity is thing, something that may be happening within your district that you need to seize. You know, the easy one is, oh my gosh, we got an opportunity of an expanded, possibly employee base. Let's make sure they're all coming to St. John and not going to that other district. I was thinking more of along the lines of student. Sure, like, let's go ahead and say it. Uh, the uh, classes that they can take through Barton. You bet. That's a, that's a great opportunity. Yeah. You bet. Absolutely. That's, that's great. For lack of a better term, I'll say dual credit courses. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's kind of tough for me, but I was thinking maybe we could be a bedroom community to Great Bend or Pratt. We you bet. Find Get some of those kids down here because this is where they should be and they can travel to Great Bend or Pratt. And sell herself. they're going to be a bedroom family, they should have their bedroom here, not in Great Bend coming back and forth. Ma'am, do you have any others that you'd like to add? Well, we've had several young families that are moving back home again, oh, awesome. building their forever houses, so they're big planning on staying. That always does you proud when you have a graduate from 10 years ago that's been away to the big city, and they say, I want to get back here and raise my family mm -hmm. in my hometown. Sir. We've kind of got the county up there, but we might have an opportunity to work with our, our city. Absolutely. In some type of... So I don't want to put word, but city council, school yeah. board, co-op, yeah. uh, cooperative, okay. Yeah, are you duplicating services? Are there things out there that you can do? Let me give anybody an opportunity that has a number three that they haven't had an opportunity to shout out. Mr. Meyer, is there anything that you can think of? Uh, just, uh, I guess, goes along with uh, stands. I would add, uh, you know, the dual credit course, but also partnerships with uh, 
businesses as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So we're talking about the collaborative partnerships on the key work. Right. Great. Do you have any, uh, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, do you have some pathways within your high schools mm -hmm. that yeah. some of your existing districts don't? You know, somebody goes, you know, I think I'm going to go to St. John Hanson because we have this career tech opportunity. The biochemistry we're starting Biochem, wonderful. That's why we brought you here, Mr. Meyer, to come up with the inside the walls <laughs> stuff. Okay, so now the last one is the threats. Now, a threat can be to any small community, even larger community, that one of your big manufacturing plants is closing down, which unfortunately means that employees don't have a job or they could be moving. So are there any threats that you need to be proactive about within your school district, community, region? And if there are, please uh, consider running this down. Start concluding your thoughts, please. Sir, we'll start here with you. If you don't mind, is there a threat that you would like to share with us? Um, I guess one of the kind of bothers me is just the lack of uh, state and federal financial support. The financial support? Yeah. yeah. That's one you can't control. You can't do that here. You can lobby as much as you can, but you don't. It's out of your control. So, sir, let's go this way. Um, I think we need to battle substance abuse. Okay, great. Kids. Excellent. That one showed up elsewhere, which is very normal. Sir, you have anything you'd like to add to this list? I have water. Water? Uh, lack of water, I assume. Lack of water okay. or, or uh, uh, we got a nitrate problem and we had to get that fixed, but quality. Okay. A lot bigger deal on West, but... It could, could migrate this way, unfortunately. Yes, sir. Uh, aging population? Yes, absolutely. And that sure is not just in St. John, it's in most everybody in rural America. Ma'am, do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, it's kind of a roundabout way. It bothers me is um, uh, some of the local ground gets sold to out of state. Okay. And they don't necessarily, other than the. Are we talking about agricultural ground? Yeah, hunting ground. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. And it's taken out. It's going to hobbyists. Is taken out of the yeah, okay. Um, they contribute to the tax, but that's it. Nothing else. Yeah. Population, revenue, economics of the county, other than the taxes. Yeah, they're not buying groceries in town unless it's peasant season. But they're here. Sir, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I have. Uh, one that's a threat to me personally is sure. forced consolidation. You bet. That's always a concern. You bet. And you're worried about maybe legislatively yeah. it may be forced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. 
Sir, anything that you could add? Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I just wrote down a, you know, a, a, we're an agricultural community, so you know, a dip in that economy directly yeah. affects everybody. You bet, it sure does. I mean, it's amazing what a couple of Marines can do for a, uh, an agriculture person's peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, anything you'd like to add? Um, it's more of a challenge. It's uh, attracting recruiting talent. Sure. Yeah, okay. Talent. You bet. You bet. And that's not just teachers. That could be the local <laughs> business downtown that needs to have a great young insurance salesman come in and purchase the business from a right. person that's wanting to retire. Anybody else like to add to this list? Feel free to just I think order that. Along, Stan was getting that was uh, uh, the state would shut down our irrigation, then they'd lose the tax money and jobs and kids. Ma'am, what did you say? Oil production okay. too. If they shut that down. Are you guys on the Ogallala Walker for here? Kind of, kind of on the edge. Right on the edge. Yeah. We have good one. Anybody else? Okay, so now what we have done. I got a couple here. Please. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Josh. Yeah. I'm bad. I forgot. Uh, one is the lack of daycare. Yeah. Um, that yeah. kind of contributes to the ability of folks to work and uh, um, yeah, okay. recruit talent and some of those things. Another is a lack of collaboration. Um, and I think contributes to divisiveness. Sure. Uh, I don't mean we're talking about an issue that might seem divisive tonight. I'm not talking about that issue. I'm just talking about staff and the community and everybody. Sure. Everybody has their own thing. Mm -hmm. And, and never the twain show me. Yes. Okay, very good. I'm sorry. I no, that's right. Now you know how, how I feel about you in this group. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops, Thank you, and I'm sorry, ma'am. Great list. Now when we get to our goal setting session, these may or may not generate some possible goals. It's definitely opened your mind up to what is happening within your district, your community, your county, so that you'll have an idea. So. Before we go, I want to make sure, uh, I know that Josh has heard of this, but uh, McCrell is a research organization in Denver that does a lot of incredible research, of which we at KSD use quite a bit. The leadership actions that really make a difference in a school district, and it's a book called District Leadership That Works, it's by Robert Marzano, which some of you may have heard about, but we're talking about district leadership, which means board and superintendent. So the things that you can do within a district to make a difference is to have collaborative goal setting. Number one, what are we doing tonight? You didn't know it, but it's the number one thing that you can do to improve your school district is have not just the superintendent come up with goals and say, well, come to us and we'll tell you if we like them or not, we'll approve them or not approve. Collaborative, which is what you're doing tonight. Then non-negotiable goals for achievement. When you set these goals down, and I'll use a bigger city as an example, you can't say, well, we're going to let the kids in poverty, that's okay because they live on the south side of the tracks and they're not supposed to achieve to the level of our kids. If you have achievement goals, they're non-negotiable. They're for everybody. No excuses. Now, it doesn't mean you attain them in the time frame, but you're working at it. Board alignment and support a district. That's part of the key work. So whatever goals come up with tonight, that you basically are telling Mr. Meyer, we agree with those. Spend the money, the resources, allocate teachers, time, whatever is necessary to get those going. You're basically saying when we approve these goals tonight, we're giving you free reign to get it going. Now you're going to come to us and tell us what you're going to do, and we'll say yay or nay to that at some point, but find a way to get it done, Mr. Meyer. Monitoring goals for achievement and in instruction. So when you have board goals, our suggestion is that St. John Hutz can do what they want. It should be on every monthly agenda. You know what? If I have goals and the board's not going to ask me on occasion how we're doing, I'm probably not going to work on them as hard because I never worry about gasping. 
Now, that's not my personality, and it's also not Mr. Myers. But if it's on your agenda, he might just simply say, you know what, we're in the, we've been in the middle of this, you guys know what we're doing. We're probably not making the progress we'd like, but I can talk about number goal number one. We've really got this. It looks like this initiative and reading starting to make a difference. We'll have better information in a month or two. You know, we're talking about human beings, so you don't always see the progress that you want to have. But if you're monitoring and evaluating those goals on a regular basis, they're more likely to be taken care of. And then the use of resources to support the achievement of the instructional goals. You set a budget tonight. It looks like it's a, it's a wonderful budget. It was, I, I, I love the description of it with your piece of paper that was produced. But in there, you've got to have the resources. Now, resources isn't always money. It's not always money. But the resources that you do have available to you, are they going to be allocated in a manner of which you can achieve your goals? Now, this is what matters most, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but when you write goals, they should be aligned in some manner on this. And the core of it all is right here. You need to guarantee challenge and engaging intentional instruction, which means that you have to have teachers that challenge students. Now, one of your existing goals is retain and attract quality staff. That fits within the what matters most framework because you've got to have great staff. You need to ensure curricular pathways to success, which means you have to have challenging and personalized educational experience for your kids. Uh, bioscience, is that what you said, Mr. Meyer? Biochem. Biochem. You obviously did that because you feel like you have a population of students that have some interest in that. So you're creating challenging and personalized learning experiences. So congratulations to St. John Hudson 350 for doing that. Now out here you need to provide whole child student supports, which means you're providing the scaffolding needed for them to achieve. MTSS is a perfect example of that. I'm going to guess that St. John Hudson's well into the multi-tiered system of supports in that. That's not named there, but that's what it does. Create high performance school cultures, which means you're developing that culture of high expectations. You know, it's okay if we just get to that level. Well, you don't want that from Mr. Myers. He doesn't want that from his principals. Principals does not want that from your teachers, and your teachers sure don't want that from the students. And the last one is, do you have some sort of data-driven, high-reliable liability systems to make sure that you're creating the high-quality experiences for all? Now, let me... I do not have an answer for this, but wouldn't it be wonderful if you think when an airplane or a jet crashes? Lord, God forbid that happens. But no matter what, when it's 30,000 feet below the sea, they still try to get all the pieces. They rebuild it to find out what broke. Now, I know this is very difficult, but what if you were able to do it with Johnny that failed ninth grade math? Are you able to rebuild him to find out what failed? Now, I don't have an answer. Neither does Mr. Meyer. That's very, very difficult. But why do we let that happen in the aircraft industry, the phone industry, all of these technologies, but we allow Johnny to fail and then just keep working? So if you have all these systems in, hopefully you'll have those systems in place that guarantee that. Now, every goal that you write, I almost, I don't want to bet yet, but whatever goals that we come up with need to fit within these five areas. And I'm going to show you. So we've got students, educational program, physical plant, and personnel. And communication is an area of which is the glue that holds all those together. So it can be a goal. So I'm going to let you read this slide. This is an example. This isn't a goal, obviously. But if you write a goal, and you say, well, how do you do a facilities goal? That doesn't fit in there. Well, it would. So if you would read those bullets, please. This is an example of a goal that would deal with students. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide, which is educational program.
The next one is physical plant. And one of your goals has to do with facilities, and you're saying, well, how's that good? Well, if, you're, if it's hard to learn because it's 95 degrees or 32 in the winter, it's hard to learn. So you can fit a facility goal that makes perfect sense. Personnel, you have one of those already, retain and attract quality staff. And then the last one is communications. <laughs> I'm not going to put anybody on the spot on this, but I would say of your five existing goals, and this is only in my opinion, and it doesn't matter uh, uh, at all, but I would say all of your goals, except possibly number five, does not fit for meeting that criteria. Maybe communication is the one I could possibly fit it in. And I don't have to be right on that, because it's your guys' decision. But does everybody understand what I'm saying? All of these would fit probably within the last five slides. I think you could make those fit easily. This one may not fit as handily in any one of those. Possibly communication. You know, clear expectations for your staff. Collaboration. Doesn't mean it's not a good goal. It may not just be have anything to do with learning or student achievement. All right, so now. You must start this process with the belief that your commitment and hard work can make a difference for students. So the goals that you set tonight, you have to believe they're going to make a difference for your students or you're really wasting your effort. And I really believe you wouldn't have asked me to come in to do this. So we're getting ready to get busy on this. So your present goals. Now if you would look on the back of your worksheet, and I think Mr. Meyer actually had some, but I have a little worksheet that I'm going to ask you to do this as a group in two groups of three. And then Mr. Meyer, I'm probably going to ask you about pretty quick here, and I don't want to put you on the spot, so please do not evaluate Mr. Meyer on this. I didn't give you any heads up on this at all. So when we look at these, provide adequate resources for technology in classrooms. So most of you would know, yay or nay, we're doing that, we're in progress. But Mr. Meyer, is there a, a quick synopsis of where you believe the district is? on providing adequate resources for technology? Um, we're getting there. Um, we've made strides, um, but we're not there. We're not where we need to be. Uh, you know, we've added some resources, um, added some training, uh, had some training throughout the years, but uh, having a concrete plan, uh, that's what we're lacking. Okay, that's exactly what we need to hear. Now, anybody want a clarification from what Mr. Meyer just said? My guess is you had a pretty good idea of what the answer to that is. Now, number two is to ensure students have access to quality programs, opportunities, and resources. Sir, if, you would, if you're able to report on that, that would be wonderful. Um, we're uh, working on our local curriculum expectations. We did that with math this last year, doing that with reading this year. Um, the career planning and advanced courses, we're adding some things. You know, we've added uh, the online courses. We've got uh, ag courses coming to St. John's. We've got some automotive classes we're taking kids up for. Uh, textbook uh, adoptions, uh, we need to work on that schedule. We don't have that for us. Any questions for Mr. Meyer on your present goal number two? Present goal number three is provide for well-maintained, updated, and safe facilities, sir. Our capital improvement budget and plan um, we took on a major project, as you all know, which uh, took, uh, will take a lot of that, that budget. Uh, emergency operating procedures uh, are in place. We need to update and clarify some of those and get a more concrete thing and give folks hands. Uh, it's not our entire plan. So the communication to the public is lacking. Okay, thank you. Number four is to recruit and retain highly effective staff. Um, no formal plan. We do have a mentoring program, a new staff orientation day that's uh, new for this year. Um, we did add to the negotiated agreement to pay moving expenses and 
signing bonus to help uh, with our recruitment efforts. Very good. Wonderful. Okay. Then the last one is maintain updated board policies and procedures. Um, our board policy book uh, is in the process of being reviewed and uh, should be to us this month. Is Angie uh, installed on the yeah. And uh, so we're well in the process of that. Uh, that will be an electronic format uh, there. Uh, our HR procedures in the office, uh, we've continually been tweaking those. Classified handbook, uh, we're still trying to finalize that the office. Uh, so we've done a lot of work on that. So feel good about where we're headed there, just not done. So does the board have any clarification questions for Mr. Meyer on your existing goals? Now, as you can see on the worksheet that I've given you on that back where the goals are, what I'd like you to do, and I'm going to put you in groups of two groups of three, so because I don't know you, I assume all three of you, you three can work together. If you three would work together on this, but what I would like you to do is you can see there's a Likert scale there. Unfortunately, you got a three, which means you can be on the bubble if you choose to do that. But as a group of three, and there's two groups of three, to the best of your abilities, try to assign a number one through five on whether you believe it's been met or unmet. Okay? So by consensus, this group of three are going to say goal number one is a one, two, three, or four. All right? Now, I think I have a four there, so that's what it really should be. It's just a four. Now, if you can, now this is for your information only, but if you can, what evidence are you using to say you've met the goal or you're not or you're in process? You know, what evidence are you using? And then the, the big question is, is that goal still valid or not valid? And to your best of your abilities, I'm really asking that you're able to come up with a single answer in your group of three and a single answer over here. So I'll, I'll just monitor, and when we're done, we're done. I found out in the first moment, I found out in the third grade, which computer class, which I found out in the third grade, which I Are you with the local newspaper, man? No, we have a little TV station. Oh, wonderful. Downtown. Great. So you have a little educational access channel. Mm -hmm. Good. Is Cox your cable provider in this? No, area? it's uh, Golden Belt Telephone. Where are they? Here? In this city. Mike, how's it going? <laughs> I'm not going to get involved. I'm pretty happy not to have to get involved. I guess my mind is bored because that's. PTO. What's your meeting time? Oh, they have PTO. This is never been one of the two districts. Our facilities are way better than everything else. I would say I would say that might And you had a rep you have representatives from throughout your district on this panel. Were they invited to 
We do put things on the web, and and they can tell there if right. they look at it or not. Right, Actually, but on the TV channel, you really can't. Talk about that a little bit. 
there's no right or wrong answer here, but we want to make sure we have some consensus. Now, what this might mean, this might end up being a high priority for the disc, for your disc as a potential goal. Because you obviously have, a, you, you may be thinking the same thing and your language is a little different. So let's find out. With this goal, please, this group, please explain to your colleagues why you had you had a four, correct? Were you the four? You were the two. Okay, that would be good. Uh, what, why did you say two? I think the will maintain part is what drew us down to two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's in consensus that it had more to do with your maintenance of the buildings. Okay. Please explain to your colleagues why you chose a four for that. We chose a four because we felt we were contributing, contributing as much resources as we can okay. every year to upgrade the facility. So you believe you're putting in the maximum amount of resources. Now, does that mean money and people? Both, potentially. Okay, money, mostly. All right. So now, we're not saying either one of you are right. But let's real quickly, is the goal still valid on both sides? Or yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, sir. Another reason we thought it was important was we feel we need to take steps to make it safer by having two, just two offices, two entrances, improving the back. We agree with you. Yeah. And we compare our facility to other schools. Every other school in the lake. And felt you're above what most are, which is wonderful. Yeah. Ours, but you I think ours is just the, all that. Okay. Ours well. is the wording and the very three and four, third and fourth word. There's too much wording on that. Okay. You know, obviously, we're not going to make anybody change a number, but I want you to consider this when we start talking about goals on how you as an your own person where this stands as a potential goal for next year. Because although I think your language, you were pretty much saying the same thing, but the importance of it might be, there might be a little bit of difference on that. Which how, is, how do you measure? That's a good question. What, what, what? You know, you, the only measurement I heard right now was by potential money, but you don't know what anybody else is spending, or that you believe you're on the higher part of the league by observation. So that's really hard not to hard data by any means. Because are you spending your, are allocating your resources uh, better than anybody else? You don't know. Okay, recruit and retain quality staff. I'm not sure where I started, but we'll go with this group first. What number did you, okay, you had a four, and did you believe it was still a valid goal? Okay. So this, what number? Three, okay, that's all right, that's fine. Still a valid goal? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, because I think all of you believe this is really important to your school district, what kind of comments did you have in your conversation when you talked about retaining and recruiting a quality staff? Great. So now, when you say new, new teacher or completely new? Okay. Great. That's really new. So it's an opportunity to, to grow your program and the kids hopefully are excited about it at some point. So what was your conversations on this? We were excited with the new uh, teacher and the new principal. Great. You bet. So you have an opportunity, you got great people, and obviously you got great people, great things can happen. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. All right, so now let's go with this group over here. What number did you assign number five, updating policies and procedures? Four. Four, yes. okay. And this group over here? Valid still? First group, okay. And second group, still valid goal? Okay, all right. So now, I would say you're really thinking pretty close, even though you were not real similar on this. A lot of your thoughts were very similar. You just judged it in a different manner. So be at like that. But now you have five goals here. You've already told me that they're still valid, they're important to your district. Now, I'm going to ask the board this question. We could say, these are your goals, or we can generate some potential new goals and then prioritize them 
let's say we end up with uh, six goals over here, and we got these five, and we got 11 goals. And then we prioritize those 11 and come up with whatever's the most. Now that might mean, even though these are important, that those don't aren't your high priority goals anymore if they don't get high prioritized votes for or tallies, for lack of a better term. Now, even if, let's just say, this one for some reason doesn't get top priority, it's probably still important to your district. So that might not be a district goal, but it's a goal you still want Mr. Meyer to, to work on. So I'm asking the board right now, do you want to look into some potential new goals because you didn't throw anything out here. You told each other, and you all agreed, that these are all valid. That's five goals. Do you want to see if there's anything more important than those five? And I'm open for discussion within your group. Please talk to each other about that. No right or wrong answer. Well, I think one if we try more goals, let me tell you the process that yeah. might help you. Or add more. Well, I think number five can maybe be lowered and something be raised. If we look at new goals, you bet. Here, here's how we would do it. This may help your conversation. As an individual, I'm going to give you some sticky notes. And I'm going to use you as an example. I'm going to look at the person an example. I'm going to give you three or four sticky notes. You're going to write one goal per sticky note that you think might be good. All right? Okay. It could be based upon the SWOT analysis. You know, gosh, it just everybody thought this was good. Maybe we need to have a goal based on that. You're all going to do that. So if you all do four, then I'm going to push you in a group of three, which means now you have 12 potential goals. But I bet you some of them are common. So between the two, uh, between this goal, I'm going to ask you to come down and try to condense them down to four. We're going to do the same thing down here. So then this group's going to come in and say, you know, the four that we chose were here, here, here. We're going to put the sticky notes here. You're going to be listening to them come up and go, gosh, three of those, we have a different one. So now we have five. Then I'm going to give you four sticky dots. So let's say we ended up with six potential new goals here. We have these five. I'm going to give you four sticky dots, and you're going to put a dot on the ones that you think are most important. And then I'm going to count the dots, tally them. You may have some over here that don't get in the top five or six. Now, having 12 goals or 10 goals or maybe even six goals can sometimes be unmanageable. What's most important? Typically, typically, we'll have maybe the top four. It's pretty obvious. And then number five, there's a big gap. And we say, all right, by consensus, are these four your most important? And we'll go from there. So. You've already talked, at least at this group, there was a conversation that we would like to at least see if there's some new goals. I haven't heard comments here, but this needs to be board consensus on how you wish to proceed. Well, let's hear your, hear your goals, Bob. My sticky get, notes? Yeah, get, get these sticky notes going. Yes. So, which means you would like to see go through with it and just see. Because if these are your most valuable, though, they will, you'll find out they're the most valuable because that's what's going to get your dollars. I'm looking at a lot of, I'm looking at weaknesses and threats and opportunity. I'm not really looking at strengths. Absolutely. Yes. And I see a lot of those things kind of go with what we have on our goals right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I could come up with one. I can't come up with three. The only one I would, I worry about the substance abuse and I just the student. Just spit it out, whatever you're thinking. That would be the one I would try and come up with. Substance abuse. Well, just pay more attention to, I don't know if it's student more, issues. Get more programs. To, uh, I, I don't I mean, know what you can do. At least do a lot of stuff. Yeah, they do. But I just know it bothered me when we did that survey that one time we had teachers and staff that that was one of the things that they brought up. And apparently, I mean, they're with the students now. Well, they know what they're going through. How many times a year does people come in for talks? Oh, a couple of times. Yeah. And they're, not, they're not always specific to that issue. Yeah, I don't have a plan. That's your turn. Yeah, thank you. Right? You've got a good board member, understands that. You bet. 
they don't think that. <laughs> well, but you're the vice president. They obviously thought something of you. Gary? Yes, sir. I, I like the top four. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Goals number five. I feel like um, it's been put in motion to achieve. It's just going through the process. Sure. So if the, the president, and obviously he's just one voice of seven, so please don't let him drive the conversation, but he's got a, a point that at least somebody said similar except for a new goal, that the four seem to be really important yet to your district. Now by consensus, if you think those are the four and then if you want to add a fifth, you can, or you can just informally say we'd like you to come up with some sort of a plan. It doesn't have to be a district goal, but you know, that's up to the board. But you've got uh, one board member that thinks these are still very important. Your analysis and discussion on it probably proves that point. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here to the conversation that you just heard from Mr. Fish. Agree or agree, disagree with his. So if I was to add something, it would be on number four. It says recruit and retain quality staff. How about recruit and retain students? Mm -hmm. As a reason for the statement. Well, you mentioned that one of your spring amendments. I mean, that can be one that could be added to this. You know, every goal usually has some sort of little benchmark goals, action plan that you're working towards. So, right, uh, you're the type of guy that I think we need to hear from. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm just listening, taking them all in. I, is there anything you? Do you disagree with what you're hearing that you would like to go, or do you feel these are adequate goals? They're adequate. Okay. Now, as we've got at least one board member that would like to talk about uh, the alcohol uh, use for lack of Well, term. maybe, you know, when you talk about a safe facility, maybe that's something that can be incorporated into the well, absolutely. safe facility yeah. because if they don't feel like I they think can that could be incorporated. Absolutely, that was it. It's really well within that particular goal. So you've already looked at the highlights or lowlights from your SWOT analysis, made a few editorial comments on your existing goals to make sure that when we're doing facilities that we want to make sure that we maintain those because that's one of our weak areas according to your analysis. And that we would really like to make our facilities safe, not that we don't fall down the steps safe, that we feel comfortable and that we have a safe environment environment within by adding this. Now, did I put more words into your mouth than you wished to have heard? So here's what I think I'm hearing. I want to make sure the board thinks that I'm serving you well here and I'm not trying to push. I think we've got four goals. We're going to make sure these are in there somewhere so they're not forgotten. That, that could be a focus. And that this is still important to the goal of the board, but it's not something that needs to be Official. It's just, it's already a process you're starting, it sounds like, and you just want to continue it and finalize those percenters. I feel like number three is very broad. It goes from maintaining a facility to drugs and alcohol, maybe it needs to be split. Um, not having your actual language on it. It's going to be real hard to fill out the survey next year. It's so broad. Provide for well maintained, updated, and safe facilities. And one of your objective three could be, you know, this could be put in there specifically. You have two objectives under that one. And I will put that language in here for you, Mr. Meyer, so your clerk will have that. And then you can take it to your board and say, gosh, Gary didn't hear a thing you said. Or hopefully I did. That we're in there. So, something that I'm seeing here that we don't have on a goal that I don't know if you can put it as a goal, but it seems like money or financing revolves around all of this. We're talking about economy here, we're talking about finances here, we're talking about uh, community economic development, uh, bedroom community with housing and all that. Uh, I mean, I don't know how the biggest way for the school to get extra money is through donations or Increasing your revenue yeah, through enrollment. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that can even be a, a goal to, to educate, maybe to educate people about how to 
you know, the, through the foundation. You know, I, I mean, I don't know that that means to be a goal, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like money is the root of all of this. But if we can't provide it, money leads us to the adequate resource. Money leads us to the Well, your, your goal too, sir. Money leads us to the facilities. I hope I'm not too broad on this, but your goal too, when you, I, I, I wrote it in very condensed, but is ensure students have access to quality programs, opportunities, and resources. So that would be up to the district to figure out how to ensure that they have those opportunities and resources. Now that may be allocating your funds a little different than you presently are, or finding some grant opportunities. And utilizing our education fund. Yeah, we've we talked about that yeah. a little bit. I mean, that, that's why I'm headed. Okay, so I'll make sure that gets some language in there so it's not forgotten when we walk away from this table. Put that on there. All right, so in review, we've got four goals. We're going to make sure finances, as mentioned within this here, make sure that maintenance of the facilities is noted as the area that you all believe is the biggest concern on your facilities and that you are concerned about the either the potential or the perception of the alcohol and drugs uh, within your school district or community and we'll make sure that gets put in here and then recruiting we also want to include students and that may have a lot to do with some of these things too here that may happen so did you get what you wanted? Now, obviously, the language has not been written, but I want to make sure that you feel comfortable with that. You have good goals. There's no doubt about that. All right. So I want to make sure you saw this, but I will try to write these in a manner that's understandable, and they need to be wordsmith by either Mr. Meyer or your board to make sure that your goals are not mine. So it's a desired result that you envision. So you've got those four. That's your, your desired results have now been verbalized to me. It's observable and needs to be measurable. So I would suggest that you ask Mr. Meyer to put some timetables on that and how they can be observed. Now, we also have already made, a, I think, a pretty good point. Some of them are hard to measure, you know, like maintenance. But, you know, they could just be uh, quantifiable that I have less people at the basketball game saying, the bathrooms aren't clean. You know, I haven't, I'm not hearing that like I used to, for an example, that could be. But it's a broad statement that answers this question, what does your school district hope to accomplish? And it looks like to me you have four really good things that you wish to accomplish in 350. So congratulations on that. So we are concluded. I will get all of this information in electronic format and get to Mr. Meyer, and eventually I would assume that he will get it back to you as a board and then you will have a final say on that. And then Mr. Meyer and his delegates get to work. <laughs> Mr. Meyer, is there anything I can do for you? I don't think so. All right. Boy, it's really fun working with you. I appreciate it. Are so you going to take those with you? I will take all these with me, okay. put them in electronic format, and probably have them to you by noon tomorrow. And then okay. i got to go to Kansas City tomorrow afternoon for okay. another assignment. So thank you. Thank you. you bet. It's nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Good luck to you. You bet. comments there wasn't anyone here when we started meeting so if anyone have anything to say not regarding the board of education districts we'd like to hear from you at this time yes two doors
policy of USB 350 was on the new sessions. Do you have a policy? A formal uh, policy? We do. Um, and that's it's up, actually updated here in this meeting where we're going to discuss that. Okay. So is it available online? No, not yet. <coughs> it will be. Okay. Well, in this packet, what I've, what I've given you is the state statute um, that relates to school immunizations and then attendance on the statute, which um, kind of ties in. Uh, I need you a cheat sheet for the immunization requirements for children. And then the kind of a question and answer, the two sheets, uh, FAQ sheet, things like that. I didn't know how well versed you were in immunizations and what questions you might have. And towards the back, I pulled off what I could find, which was Lisa's um, web page. Lisa Farmer has a web page for the school nurse office. And then the last page is actually Stafford's uh, handbook, some of their handbook, as an example. So. You said this is in the handbook? This is their handbook. <coughs> so Maxville, I couldn't find one online. I did talk to Becky. Um, Basically, what the commissioners, I think, want to know, the other two schools have a policy where if the, if the students have not completed their uh, immunization requirements by a certain date, they just, they're not able to come back to school. Do you have, I talked to Lisa and she yeah. said she was going to start working on that this year. Yes, we will have uh, into September, uh, not a firm date, but yes. Yeah, okay. And I know she's already working on yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. So. yeah. We visited about it. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, after we visited, you know, we had a chance to talk about it. Yeah. Clarify some things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, do you have any questions for me about anything? Did you have some concerns? Well, yes and no. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we've had like three incidents that kind of raised some concerns. We had a 15 year old that's never had a tech PDAP, never had a we had a, a seven-year-old that never had his kindergarten shot. And we had a, she must be a fifth or sixth grader, that when she went to, when we fetch pointed to get her shots, when she was little, it was an invalid shot because they were given too soon. And she didn't know what to have So there's, you know, three things kind of bang, bang, bang. And these are students in our district. Uh -huh. They're not one set. They've been. No, they've been. Mm -hmm. That was kind of, you know, kind of random, random health for us. But we've been talking about immunizations in our both Board of Health since last August. And they've been asking me to come and talk about their stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had policy, you had to have certain shots, right? Before we've, this, yeah, before we've this. Followed the state law, it's probably just follow up and ensuring that I it gets done. I think that's what it is, it's just follow it's, through. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we'll work with, you know, we work with the schools all over time. Yeah. I came last January, we did a TDAP kind of here at the school. And we had quite a few kids. What does that mean? Tetanus, bacterium, pertussis. Pertussis is what we've been talking to me. I assume you have to get terms permission before yes, you can do that. And the school nurses always take care of that. <coughs> paperwork for me, which is really nice. They get the consent forms, they get the insurance coverage. All I have to do is check the vaccine. So what do you do if someone says, I don't want my child to have well, that's, this shot? You, know, that's, you can either have a religious exemption or you can have a medical exemption. And it's my understanding on a religious exemption you don't have to prove anything. You don't right. have to be sincere you, about it at all. Right. You, you can just say, right my religion it. says I don't, you know, doesn't support me. There's nothing really to do. <coughs> so once you have that paper, then everything's fine. It's every year. You have to do it every year. <coughs> just to cover yourself. And that was one of another commission um, concern was the liability because basically they oversee me. 
you know, somebody got sick or got really from an accident or benefit disease, would it be their liability? Is it the health department? Is it the board? So is it an exemption form standard through mm -hmm. the state that we have to work mm -hmm. And the, the physician should have that option. Mm -hmm. You can do it That it just basically says, so and so cannot have such and such vaccination because it would be detrimental to the health. And then the doctor has to sign. I don't know how many of those for sure you have. I think there's one family in there. Are there any other questions for doors? budget. I have nothing further to add on the budget. Uh, like I said before the the tax levy is just a, sh uh, a smidge lower uh, for the direct commission uh, than what was published. Everything else is uh, as it was published. Okay, motion to approve. Mr. President, move the board approve the 2014-15 budget as presented. Second motion. The move and second to approve the 2014-15 budget as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6-0. Board of Education Districts. Understand we've got some patrons that like to speak tonight. We'll uh, entertain each of you to speak to us. If you would, please keep it to a minimum of three minutes, or maximum of three minutes apiece. <laughs> so whoever would like to go first. I'll go first. Kevin. First of all, I just I want to thank all you guys for serving on the board. Uh, sometimes it's a thankless job. Uh, uh, everyone in this district should just come up and tell you thank you because you put in a lot of hours. Uh, but uh, when those kids walk across that stage and graduate. Uh, it makes you appreciate the time you put in and see them go out in the community and become prosperous or go on and acquire good jobs. You know we've done a good job in this district. So uh, I thank you all for that. I know tonight you're going to talk about board member election, uh, about changing from the district, maybe at large or something else, I'm not sure. There hasn't been a lot of public about this. I haven't seen anything in the paper or in the newsletter of the school. Uh, I just saw a little something on the website agenda. I think the public needs to know more before you make a decision and have some input into this. Um, I did a little research and I'm going to give you some figures. You guys may already know this about the tax base in the county. 14% is residential. 15% is utilities and pipelines. 64% is from agriculture, oil, and gas. What that suggests is that a relatively small portion of the population pays the majority of the taxes in Stafford County. So if you change from a district situation to an at large, there is a chance, I'm not saying it will happen, there is a chance that it all could go into the residential. There's a chance it could all go out I'm not saying either way, but it could happen. I think you need to think about that before you make a change. Also, there are many absentee landowners that don't even have a vote in the county. Their mainly, main communication may only be talking to a board member in their area. I've had landowners call me and say, hey, what about this you're doing with the mill levy and that? They may know the person that lives in that area if they're in the rural area where their land is. Not saying that board member is always going to be from there, but there is a chance. Um, the sidebar to all this is the agreement that was signed in 1968 or 9, I can't remember which year, between USD, well, it would be the St. John District and the Hudson District, 
both boards met and they signed an agreement that the area that was the old Hudson district would always have representation. I don't know if you know, any of you guys know that. I'm a lot older than most of you. This might be something you want to look at before you do anything. It's surely buried in this library or vault in the school someplace. <coughs> but, you know, this system has worked for a lot of years. I don't think it's broke, so I don't see a reason to change it. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Kevin. Would anyone else like to speak? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not much on politics, and I don't know a whole lot of all the fine details that go behind everything. But you know, I don't I don't know what's wrong with what we have now. Like Kevin said, you know, it's, it seems to work fine. Um, but this is this is just my opinion. Um, you know, the people in the system we have, it seems to work for everyone involved. Um, the board members from our area, you know, they're they're just not on the board to fill a position. They're there because they care, and I know you all care. Um, but if we go to the at-large system, kind of like what's been discussed, or it's, it's an option that's out there, you know, you stand a chance of losing that that part. Um, they're there. They they care about the kids. They care about the community. They care about the school. You know, and it's that heart that drives them, that keeps them on the board, and keeps them wanting to do this. And you know, that's that's what we need is people who care about the kids, the community, and the school. And um, I guess it's, it's just my opinion that going to that at-large puts that at risk. You know, you're eventually going to run out of people that want to be on the board for the right reasons. You're going to run into people that, you know, just say, well, you know, we need a spot filled here, you do it, or they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, if you keep it the way it is, and like I said, I don't know much about politics, so I don't know if there's anything wrong with it. Um, but keeping it the way it is keeps that heart, that drive, that love for the kids and the community and the school alive and, and well and driven for what's best for what I think is for the kids in the school. Um, you know, like I said, I, I don't know much about politics, but in my opinion, that, that love is what should drive the people who want better for the kids in the school and community. Okay. Thank you. I guess I'll add just a couple of comments. Completely agree with everything they say. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Derek Foote. Um, Grew up here and moved back just within the last three years and can say I'm proud to be able to move back and let my kids grow up in a smaller community. Um, one of my main concerns is I lived in Wichita <coughs> just outside of it and saw several school districts there that started to require parents that live outside of town to bring their kids to school. Um, they canceled the bus systems and backed off of it. From a parent perspective, I've got a three-year-old that's going to start school this year. Um, if you change this and make it out large, majority of the tax base, as Kevin mentioned, the tax dollars come from outside of town, but the majority of the population is all in St. John. Um, just looking at the board, I believe most of you all live in St. John. Um, from my perspective, the ones of us in the country need a vote too. Um, otherwise, school buses could be removed and... I know for most of us it would be a bind to try and get kids to and from school on top of our jobs. Um, and I know from a flower mill perspective, we definitely have concern, concerns there. Largest private workforce in the county, just removing that potential for having a say in things. I know at times nobody wants to be on the school board. Well, there's a lot of us with young kids coming up in those areas that are willing to serve and expect to in the future. So I don't think finding somebody in that area is going to be a challenge in the future. Um, just definitely a few concerns from somebody moving back. Okay. Thanks, Derek. Mm -hmm. Anyone else like to speak? I was just second what Derek said. We moved back from Omaha a couple years ago, and we're planning on building in the country. and. Just having somebody that can represent um, the area where you live is really important because it's, you know, we're all in the same county, but living, you know, 18 miles from a town can be a different situation from people who live in town. And so, you know, if there's a chance that everybody in town is on the board, you don't necessarily feel like you have that voice. And so, you know, we moved, we moved back for a reason. and. Um, you know, we love that it's an agricultural-based community, and we just want to make sure that 
you know, everybody from the, the represents all the different lifestyles and, and locations within the county um, has a person that they can go talk to and represent and know that life that they're living and know the, the distance situation. Next table. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you for your comments and coming. Um, if we don't, if no one else would like to speak, we're now going to discuss it as a board and appreciate it. <coughs> not interjecting. Okay. Well, we talked about it last month. And we just heard from several residents. <clears throat> What's everyone's thoughts? Well, I will start off that I, I realize this is my family sitting over <laughs> here. But, and I have talked to some of the population in the, count, in the USD 350. <laughs> And I talked to somebody on the Pratt County line, and when they heard this, they were astounded that this was happening, and they were like, I can't, I, you know, this is something that we don't want to see. Um, somebody talked to somebody in town. They said, I don't want my neighbors all being on the board. I think that it needs to be represented. I've talked to somebody that was over on the other side of the community um, in most of the people say, if it's not broken, why are we fixing it? And why haven't we heard about this so we can voice our opinions? Because, you know, we are to represent them. And if we make decisions without asking them, I don't think we're doing our job. And the one thing I would like to have you guys think about, and this was one of the things that, Tom, you brought up, if we're forced to consolidate, are you willing to give up your opinion for some other board to be at large and we don't have a representation from our area. And that can happen. Maybe not in our board's time, but you want to stop that trend of happening that everything is just selected. Easily non-confrontational and that we don't have our right to speak up. I mean, we always have a right to speak up, but we need that ability to have representation because we're also paying taxes for that school system. And if we happen to end up in another board district, will you guys be able to say, okay, they can make all the decisions about us? So. My thought is that if uh, we were looking at continuing down this path that we probably ought to find out about this agreement in 69. Look that. I was always told it was there, that there was always have the <coughs> district for basically that part when I started from all the people that were on the board then. I asked the same question that you guys are bringing up now on why it was that way, and that's what they all told me. So, we need to know. None of us were around. Um, other comments, Tom? The way I understand uh, the way this would work is I don't think the board can vote to change the uh, districts. I think it has to be, it has to, they have to pass a resolution and it has to go to an election. Then everyone in the district would vote. <coughs> I mean, I, I don't see anyone here for changing it, everyone's against changing it, so maybe we, we should just drop it. And if we do drop it, I think that uh, it would be good to find this agreement 
So one, one way or the other. Come on. One way or the other. You know, either we, we know it's there or we're just agreeing. To I agree it now. because we we talked about this before, other and, and in previous they, and if, years, and I really don't want to talk about it again. <laughs> Me you know, neither. Let's just make a decision. I mean, it, just because something's then working doesn't mean that's the best way for it to happen. I mean, as population changes, I think we need to change to to whatever benefits the district the best. But like you say, I mean, maybe it's not broke yet. So maybe maybe we maybe we don't need to pass a resolution well, to take it to a vote. You talk about changes. There have been changes. I don't know how many years ago that they had to redistrict it because of population. I don't know if it was a state mandate. Every ten years. After every census. So, you know, there's constant change going on within the districts and stuff. That, so. <clears throat> I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a big fight that the board wants to. Wants to battle if it's if it's not broken. We just want what's best for the school. That's all we want. And it's been brought up before in several years past that maybe we need to look at going to all of them at large. It would, I think it would, you know, it, it might give, it, it might give four people from Hudson representation. It might give four people from, I, I mean, you, you could get, you could get a combined thing, but I think if, if people are good, then, then they would get elected. But, I mean, if it's not broke, why, why mess with it? I mean, I think we should have Josh look up this agreement and, and just, so we know, and just drop this, drop this once and for all. Get it in that uh, number five. Thing. All right. <laughs> Let me add a couple of things. I want to speak to the communication issue because that's really on me to communicate that issue with the public. Uh, my recommendation would be to not pursue it at this meeting. Uh, you can see that recommendation here uh, because it hasn't been communicated. Uh, why hasn't it been? Uh, because the facts were all known reasonably close to this meeting. Um, you know, my newsletter was already out uh, when we knew all of the facts. So when it comes down to communicating this issue to the public, that's not all of these folks, that's on me. So uh, the, the plan would be to communicate anything. Um, the other thing is I, I think this has never been, I may be putting words in you, uh, your mouths, but this was never seen as a uh, Hudson versus everybody else issue. But uh, uh, like Tom said, what's the best board makeup? So it's, uh, I don't think there's ever been any ill will of, of trying to divide things. Uh, I wanted to make sure that was very clear. Yeah, I look at St. John Hudson as one school, one, one district. But, mm -hmm. And along the same line, just a comment, because I agree with what you guys are saying. But I guess I would in hopes, even though I'm in District 2 and 5, because I don't even know, because it honestly doesn't really matter to me. But I would hope that anybody in the school district could come to me if they have an issue, whether I'm in District 5 or 1 or 2. It doesn't matter. So I just want to make that statement. I don't think it's, it's necessarily anything to happen. Do with the board is to stop future issues because usually if you change something it usually doesn't go back and if it, it it keeps us from becoming an issue later on if there ends up being an agenda you think okay four people are going to get off well not get off but are up for re-election and you have four people that walked in here with an agenda that can change the whole dynamic of this board really fast and i'm not like i said i'm not talking about any of us i'm just saying it keeps the future from looking like 
we're not here for the students and we're not here for our USD 350. So I think this just kind of keeps that checks and balances still going. And like I said, this is the this is the way the government is supposed to be running. Not always agree with that, but I think if a school district needs to instill this in our students, that this is how things are run, that representation happens from all over. Taxation without representation. No. Well, it was never, you know, we started out with the best of intentions here. Um, it was never created a divide or any hard feelings or anything. It's kind of, it's, it's actually ironic. Um, it was started out to um, prevent hard feelings. Neighbor against neighbor for election. You know, sometimes when you throw your hat in the ring, you're, you're putting yourself out there for election. And then someone that's your friend wants to run also. And you take that as a threat in your district. Whereas if everyone's at large and everyone knows it, then there should be no hard feelings. It's just maybe the best person win. I really think that was the intention, but it ended up causing some hard feelings, obviously, tonight. Um, well, uh, don't so, look at their location. Like I said, I've talked yeah. to people from all areas of this well, I've had some calls, USD 350. I've had calls, too, from so, other areas of yeah. the county. I don't so, want it to be a Hudson St. John thing. So yeah. well, It's just that they have No one here does. You know, we need it. <laughs> Mr. Meyer, he always points at that little chair over there, those of you that haven't been here for a while. That little chair over there is what we're here for. And that's, you know, these kids aren't going to know if the, their uh, Board of Education got elected at large or in districts. They're just going to know if they're doing good education. And that's what the job we have all signed up and have been fortunate enough to be elected to do. So I'm kind of like Tom. If it's if we need to, we just drop it. Or, like Kevin pointed out, we need to inform the public more and um, put it off. Just how I'm feeling. <clears throat> so moving forward, you could uh, take a take action to table it or just to let the issue die for uh, lack of a motion. Well, I mean, I see both sides. And I have visited with people south of town. And I asked, and this isn't my family, it's other people. And I asked them if, if they felt slighted that Stan and I lived in town, and they said no. So it was really a non-issue, but you know, I'm I'm not looking for a fight. I just was looking to do the best thing I thought. Well, we're all just trying to do what we feel is best for the district and the kids. I, I, Maybe this isn't. I'm in favor of letting it die, but at the same time, knowing there so that if it's brought up and. Uh, Ten years from now, uh, we can go. We don't even need to. Well, we yeah, uh, we need to know because yeah. you know we're all as we come on, we're new, and the, the old head board members kind of show us the ropes. And so we need to know so we can show. You know, Derek Lou, he's gonna throw his hat in ring here. Well, yeah, uh, I, I see half a dozen. Make note of that in the minutes. Make note of that in the minutes. Not all at the same time, please. Write <laughs> these names down. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what concerned me the most was that everybody's running unopposed, and you know that's what concerns me is that you need well, to have some competition, and you could you may not get your best candidates. Well, there so. might be a board member that really feels like they have <coughs> done their time, extended their, they're, they're just ready to let new fresh blood in, but no one steps up. I guess that's one other 
Well, that's where I said last time that maybe that's partially our fault is that we're not portraying to the people, hey, come on, no. join the group. So, I would hope you know, there would be not unopposed races. But he, talking to Pete we, uh, <clears throat> back in the day, and I can't remember when he's been on the board, he said he ran unopposed. He said that was not that unusual. There's a lot of districts that ran, and that was when they had six districts. And now we're down to three. So it's not an uncommon thing. And going back to Burton just last year, and they couldn't even find enough people to run there for a while. So, you know, it's not just our group. It's <coughs> school boards in general. And I just, I just think staying with representation from all the areas. And if we can find that, then that would settle it and not be brought up again, so. To me, that would be a reason to make them all at war if you couldn't find anyone to run. Well, they did. You know. They said they put it in the paper mm -hmm. and six people stepped up and yeah, ran. Yeah, zero people the night before the deadline. And they had like six people run for three spots. After the and besides, it, okay, if somebody doesn't run in that area, can the board appoint somebody from that area? Uh, there's Isn't that uh, how there's you procedures to go about that, but a write-in candidate can win three votes. But I'm just saying that, that, say that if it stayed <laughs> in the district and nobody ran in that position and that nobody wrote in, that board would appoint somebody. I think that you're district. right. I'd have to look up that. So it's never like the board is... Spells that out. Yeah, without somebody in the district representing, so. Yeah, you can't build. Huh? They can't. Can. Well, if one of us, if something or, happens. Or I think you can leave it home. I could be wrong on that. But I think you have to I don't, I can't I don't quote the question. Go on right off the top of my head. Like it's a, uh, Karen, do Are we in agreement to run? Let it go. Let it go. Carl? It's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number four. Cooperative agreement for wrestling. Um, Folks from the Stafford School District have approached us about uh, maybe cooperating with them for wrestling. Um, we uh, we discussed this maybe a year ago about maybe cooperating with Pratt. Um, it was decided that that's just too far, not a good situation. Uh, maybe if it was something closer, we could pursue that. Uh, we never pursued it with Stafford. Uh, uh, several years ago we cooperated with them, but recently we could not because uh, you were only allowed to have two school districts cooperate for any sport. They changed that rule where now three schools could cooperate. So Stafford, Fairfield, and us could be those three schools. Uh, I've talked with their superintendent, their coaches reached out to Mr. Bergen about this. Uh, we do have one student that we know would be involved, but you know, we approach it from the standpoint of all kids. Um, uh, what's this going to cost us? This would have to be a situation where uh, if a student participates, they would be on their own to get to practice and get back, and to get to the bus and get back home after that. And we're not uh, liable. What's that? We're not liable. Uh, no, you're, nothing prevents you from being sued, but uh, no. we may have to answer, <laughs> we may have to answer that question of, uh, you know, will you provide transportation to and from all the ball games for basketball? Why don't you for wrestling? <coughs> or we could have a student that would say, "Well, I want to participate, but my family doesn't have the means to get me over to uh, Stafford and back." Um, so we just need to weigh this board. We just need to weigh that. Um, do we want to allow that, or do we want to prevent it for some kids because some kids may not be able to participate? Um, if, if it is a matter of we need to provide transportation, I, I don't think we can make that work to have somebody do it, uh, you know, let alone just having a person to do it, but also financially, I think it's not too much of a cost. 
there, even with that, there would be some cost. We would still have to get the kids uh, to and from uh, postseason. They would be wrestling for St. John. So then we need a St. John's singlet, and uh, uh, we need to have a coach go with them. Uh, maybe Mr. Bergen would drive to the regionals, and you know, it's <laughs> the coach would be there. But, um, yeah. Did you say coach maybe Coach Julianne could go. Oh, no. <laughs> so all of that being said, uh, I. You know, I think it's an opportunity for our kids to do something that maybe they wouldn't do. Another thing would be uh, that some might say it uh, competes with our with our sports, uh, which I don't think it's uh, going to be a, an issue there. Uh, there's likely be kids that aren't going to participate in basketball. This gives them another avenue. So my recommendation is to uh, prove in their own, into a cooperative agreement with staff who progressing. Uh, Mr. Bergen, did you have anything to add on that? No, no we, we just need to uh, have the agreement in place by September 1. Right. Yeah. So we just need to make patient rules. Yeah. A cooperative agreement. We're trying to agreement. make it practice to uh, right. discuss an issue before we uh, have action on it. And this came to us between the last meeting and now. Yeah. Uh, we have to have direction now or, or we won't do it. And this would be for two years. Yeah, it goes for, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. carpet agreement goes for two years. Now, we could opt out next year and not allow our kids to participate. That doesn't mean we have to allow our kids to participate. But the agreement with the state between us and Stafford and Fairfield would be in place for two years. So, um, is wrestling kind of like volleyball where they have class no, together? It's, it's a, a quasi-team. It's not a team sport like volleyball. Rest. No, I mean, like, if they went on <coughs> to a uh, tournament, they'd have 1-2, because Stafford's 1-A, right? Yes. And if we end up being 2-A, are they are they at the same places, or are they yeah, different places? Yeah, 1-2 and 3-A. One, all, all six classes are at Hartman Arena. And I think 1-2-3-A actually competes as one single class. As one single it? class, I think. Because there's not enough kids. So 1-2 and 3-A actually compete against each other. And they might be, they might be at A's, too. Yeah, they, they, they're <coughs> combining one, two, and three are combined. So currently, Fairfield brings athletes over to Stafford, too. Mm -hmm. You know, we did that back um, when Tyler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it was like Jay Pound and Orrin Farrell and those guys. We never really had any issues that I know of, but things have changed. I mean, that's been one in years ago, 12 years ago. They got along really well. And I, you know, Vance brings up a good point. It does, it does open us up to additional liability. I mean, yes. uh, they drove themselves back and forth. But, right. Um, right. I'd like to let them do it. Just it may keep a kid from transferring. If he has something he likes here, he wants to stay here. He keeps him busy doing something. Yeah, keep yeah. out of trouble, too. Uh, Mr. President, I'm going to move the board to approve the cooperative agreement with Stafford for us. Second. Move and second to approve a cooperative agreement with Stafford for wrestling. Is there any discussion? This would be contingent on them accepting that as well, but I think it will be good. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6 0. Facilities project change orders. Uh, page 39 and 40 has those change orders. These are things that. Uh, have been brought to your attention and through um, Friday emails or uh, periodic emails uh, going along. I just wanted to bring them all to you at one time rather than trying to have a special meeting to approve one change order. Um, the uh, first one there is for the heat and air in the district office in the new office area. That had to be separate from the main system so we can shut off the main chiller and not have to cool the whole building just to cool one office. Uh, that was not taken into account when we, the plans were drawn up. Um, and, uh, just a few other things, some of those smaller items. Um, the water line issue, that uh, number three, uh, is to run new uh, copper down the hallway. It's quite a long run. Um, and. Uh, that's in the women's restroom by the 
Old Grady School Office. And just a few plumbing here and there, some of the uh, adding some more valves, some sanitary napkins for the restrooms that weren't in the plans. Uh, same thing. Same thing with the tops. Uh, with some of the work they did in the bathroom, they had to fur out the walls a little further. Uh, so they had to account for the, the countertops for those that they did not have in the plans. Uh, light fixtures that needed to be replaced that were, we were going to reuse what was there, but it was not okay. Uh, this other large one, the 9500, uh, 9, is that water line issue. Now we will add uh, another $2,200. Uh, uh, that water line was when we had leaking underneath the building. Um, we also had a water line going back to the restrooms under the building and they had already tapped into that. So they had to work into the wall that they had just built and uh, attach that new water line. So uh, that's more there. All of that, would, that we would have no galvanized on that side of the building now, except for to the fax room. So some small areas that would be easy to take care of. I'll tell you what, that galvanized pipe causes us so much trouble. You know, we shut off the water, and every valve we have, every flush valve, every sink, shower head is clogged. Yes. And you know, it's a mess. So getting rid of that valve, uh, galvanized pipe, is a, is a big deal. Um, a lot of these things, you know, I had planned on extra money. Uh, you know, these things. I was going to ask you, has the contractor <coughs> just thrown anything in extra? Yes. Yeah. Um, here and there, uh, you know, refinishing uh, one of the walls in our bat in our uh, um, in our classroom, uh, and he wasn't required to do painting. Um, some of the flooring was messed up. Um, that was not what we wanted, but was right according to the plans. Uh, he ate that and uh, got new floor, uh, the floor color scheme. Um, I, I, there's more. I, it's, he's been good to work with. I, a lot of this seems like it's nickel and diming us, but it's, it's been completely opposite of that, really. I feel very good about how, how the contractors work with us on on those issues. How much water leaked under the three hundred and ten thousand gallons? Okay. Got, got, the water. Water. Uh, got, got half of it. Yes, and I spoke to the city uh, last week at the council meeting. They seem uh, they're going to look at what it, what the cost is, you know, the percentage of the revenue that. So we, we don't have any idea of where this crater is, sinkhole that will yeah. open up one of these days. <laughs> the water line <laughs> crosses the yeah. sewer line, so it's likely it found the sewer line and went north out of the building. Um, and visited with the uh, the engineer or the architect and the contractor about any sinkhole under the building. Is this a safety issue? And uh, one of the areas where the contractor checked for water, you know, pulled up some carpet in the building to drill down. And it said it's five or six inches thick. You know, that slab would support quite a span underneath the building. Uh, so it's a very. Um, did you have to no talk risk. to his insurance? They said it's an act of. Yeah, it, 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 there has to be a uh, specific cause for the leak. You know, uh, uh, you know, well, a, there was. A hailstorm. Well, <laughs> an earthquake. Yeah, 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 yeah earthquake. So we felt it. <laughs> Just. Uh, <laughs> You know, old lines finally <coughs> through the life. I just thought it was worth it. Yeah. Uh, the fountains, uh -huh. did they reface the fountains so they look really shiny and pretty? Oh, they're, they're all new, yes. All well, of the fountains? The, the, there's three pairs in the elementary and then one at the high school uh, that, that they're redoing. They this better? is one of those things I thought we had in the plans, but we didn't. So there's been a few things with between the architect and us that uh, didn't get caught. And, uh, so we just, we just, just coming out of our capital outlet? Yes. Mm -hmm. How about so, the radiator in the women's restroom? <laughs> it's been painted, yes. Is that going to change the plan for any 
other purchases? No, really that, you know, we had talked about buying that uh, short bus uh, and really putting off that purchase was part of this, uh, knowing that, being conservative in that. Also, uh, contributing to that is being able to spend capital and money on additional things. So, uh, we carried over more than I expected uh, in capital outlays. So. All these things would be covered. How about the air conditioning for the library? Is that still? This week, no, the end. You'll be wearing your winter clothes. Here, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. President, I move the board approve the list of change orders as presented. I move the addition of the roughly $2,200 for plus $2,200. Second. I move and second it to approve the list of change orders as presented with the exception of the additional $2,200. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Library budget. I'm going to turn it over to Christy for this. <coughs> shows all the uh, expenditures for the library. In the past, there's always been questions about this. And so, uh, Mr. Meyer and Julianne, um, you, we, the 72 fund was all library uh, expenditures, and the 06 was what the district used. And so they've moved all our revenue up to the 72 and put all our expenses down in the 06. The 06 is our general fund. And um, so what I would have normally, um, gosh, this is wrong. Again, I'm not believing it. Uh, that 74,600 should be 69,900, shouldn't it? No, we added that well, 5,000 for the... Uh, but it should have been subtracted from the 74. I keep getting them wrong. No, that's right. Are you sure? 69,600 is what she had and okay. then added the 5,000. All right, okay. So. Um, so that's the amount that I would have normally dealt with up here with the collections and the reimbursements. And then um, uh, I dealt with, um, and I still do, deal with materials and, and um, basically that's what I deal with, materials and things that are needed for the library. But now we've got co combined. Um, that we've added the utilities and the and the um, salaries to what um, our library board sees, and basically, you know, it's going to look like if you looked at last year's budget and this year's budget that it really jumped, but it didn't really because the district has always subsidized what what we've what's the rest of the cost of what to run the library. So the library budget that we would have approved last year would have been just a portion of all these expenses, just part of that. And we would pay for those things, like Christie's salary and um, electricity and those things, out of our general fund budget. But the board would, the library board wouldn't approve that or see it. Yeah. But this board would see it in their regular uh, payments. So now all of those expenses, it, you know, as much as we can uh, is in here. You know, an example would be lawn maintenance. We don't separate that out. We'd have to have Brent clock in when he's only on the library and how much do we attribute to the mower. Something like that is difficult to come up with. 
uh, electricity, that's easy. We have a meter here, and we read it, and, and you know that bill is attributed. So it gets us closer to what actual costs are. Yeah, and and that has been always been questions um, over the few years I've been here, and so Mr. Myers worked towards this, and and so from here on out. Um, the wide report and then our local and you guys will all approve this thing. And this will, like Christy said, this will look like the library budget is a lot more than it was last year. And that's not the case. Uh, things are pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. There's a small, small increase in salaries and uh, uh, a couple things here and there maybe, but nothing yeah. dramatic at all. Um, also, this will increase our school district budget. Uh, if you remember in our discussion last month with our budget, why uh, why is our budget higher than what we started with? Well, this these this money will come in as a reimbursement. So if our general fund budget is three million, and we spend forty thousand from the foundation, well, our budget went from thirty uh, three million to three million forty thousand. So it just increases that budget. So having some of these library expenses come into our general fund will make it look a little bigger, but money is coming in to pay for that. So uh, it makes the library budget look bigger and it will make our general fund budget look a little bigger. Uh, so just know that. Uh, some of you may question that. And probably, <clears throat> like you said, the salary, there was an increase, of course, and then um, I increased my book budget. I I underestimated last year. <laughs> How many books for twenty thousand dollars? Well, let me see. It's about thirty dollars a book. Really? Uh -huh. But it's it's all the books, e books, yeah, and everything. It, yeah, it is. It's e books, and um, now we have. Uh, well, ebooks, and then we've got our um, audio books. And, and you're, don't you rent, kind of, have a rotation of renting books? Uh, yeah, and that doesn't cost us anything. That's through the South Central Kansas Library System. They, they bring us in a variety of books. But you make, uh, so this SCKLS, uh -huh. you make revenue off of it? Too? <laughs> that, that is a grant. Oh. that would help us pay for summer um, salaries in the past. Now we're, we're just contributing to the whole thing. Where is uh, heating of the building? Um, what, what is it? I was just looking through there. I'm off the bottom. It's, uh, no. Did I miss it? I might have when I set up the accounts. That one's a little more complicated. Well, because I didn't know if it was different. I mean, yeah. if it's it, yes it's, or is it? It's more complicated in that we get a single bill for all of the meters, and we pay Seminole Energy, but Kansas Gas sends us the usage. And so it's just, it's one of those things that we have to remember to go in and transfer money, yeah. move around kind of thing. Contract some of that, and that's what we pay Seminole for is right. that contract. Well, account. yeah, I, w I was looking for that yeah. because yeah, I would be curious to know the difference. High efficient, what we want to get. Yes. Yeah, because yes. with our new system. And yeah. and exactly. we, could, we could pull that out and do a historical for you. Well, yeah. Or for the board. When, when you got some time after it's all done, <laughs> well, after the project is done, and to look back to see what was gained. We can do that. Well, it better you're, be better. You're, 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 you're comparing apples and oranges, though, with the weather. But, we want to know. But, yeah, you want to know. So we just need a motion to approve that budget. Any other questions? Mr. President, I move the board approve the library budget as presented. Second. 
Moving second to approve the library budget as presented. All in favor, aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6 0. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Review KSB <laughs> regulatory policy changes. You guys would uh, stay with me. I would want to read each and every one of these policies to you. <laughs> Most of these, in typical years, is procedural. It's uh, uh, legal wording to cover certain things, changes in law, um, nothing, um, nothing crazy. Um, I do want to point out a couple to you um, uh, on the. Uh, Second round. Did you guys all read this at home? That's how I went yeah. through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, page page. Oh, there's a big red. Yeah. These, uh, I did it covered. Look up here. Uh, they, cover. These <laughs> spreadsheets here uh, kind of show you what, what, uh, why they're making those recommended changes and uh, what we need to do with it. Some of them we don't have to have. Um, One new one is uh, student data privacy, that IDAE. Uh, there's a new state law uh, that there's concern that uh, we're giving student personal student information to Kansas State Department of Education and who's taking that data and what are they doing with it. Uh, so there was a new form uh, with enrollment uh, that we had to provide uh, to let folks know that we collect data and uh, we turn it over to the Department of Education for, for various reasons uh, and what, what data goes along with that. The state like longitudinal data system. So not a big deal, but it's new. Uh, we already had the federal uh, uh, student uh, privacy, family, uh, family privacy. Uh, this is a little more restrictive. Um, one other thing we have to have is our uh, um, uh, the, this last one. We have to provide notice to teachers that. They're protected under the Tort Claims Act. This is uh, to tell teachers that you don't have to belong to the teachers union because you're covered. Uh, is what the what that that is all about. And I thought I told Doris we had a policy update for immunizations, and I missed it. So. Uh, you have a month to review those, and I'll have final recommendations on those at the next meeting. Thank you. Many may unsealed blue. Uh, you have that on your documents. It's also up here. Um, we had five bids, uh, and we're due it on August 8th. Uh, you see those. My recommendation would be to accept the high bid. Uh, Wade Russell, $2,125. If you'd like to see them, I have them here. Mr. President, I move that the board approve the bid of uh, Wade Russell. For the Troy Mini Women in the amount of $2,125. Second. So moved and seconded to approve the bid of Wade Russell for the Toyota Mini Man in the amount of $2,125. Is there any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6 0. Can you say when he's going to get it? No. All right, we have. Uh, he lives in South Carolina. Yeah, he came. He dropped his bid off. I know he just left this morning. <laughs> Maybe he'll get it at the. We'll fair. cross that bridge. Can I have to bring it to him? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not talking about old data. We have 
Head of agenda item number nine, senior release. Uh, currently, board policy allows for students to apply to the board for a release from uh, half a day of school for uh, to go to work or go to college, whatever. Uh, we have that policy in place to kind of protect ourselves financially, I guess. We don't want to, uh, there's not just that, but you know, we don't want a kid that uh, says, well, I'm going to go to college or I'm going to go work and then uh, it doesn't work out. Now I just have off or I'm going to come back in October when I quit my job or quit school. Now we have a situation to deal with that you, know, you can't really plug the kids back into the class. They've been gone for two months. Um, but also, if a student is not full-time, we can't count them full-time. So if we have a student that's working for half a day, um, that starts the year that way, we can only count them for half the time. Uh, if we wait until second semester, it doesn't matter. So we count them full-time at the beginning of the year. Whatever happens second semester doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, we do have a student, Reed Towers, is looking at uh, taking some college courses. Uh, she's got... Um, Good, good performance. Um, I believe in her ability to take the classes she's wanting to take. Like 12 hours, I it is. Uh, in the afternoon, she would leave after fifth hour. So this is outside of board policy. Uh, so I'm asking for your permission to allow this uh, situation outside of board policy. Uh, Chad mentioned earlier, you know, the the little chair. You know, we need to make those decisions based on what's best for those kids. This is a situation where I think allowing that would be best for that kid. Um, if, if anybody comes to ask for that special permission, uh, we may not recommend that. Uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, we are working on uh, you know, a work study internship uh, policy where you know, a student could go work during the school day we get credit for it. Uh, maybe we'll work at the bank. They're working on business. Uh, maybe we'll work at the bank. and They would be accountable to us, but we would count them during the school day. They would be credit for that. So that's another way we can make that a part of their learning process, not just uh, why don't you go work somewhere and uh, stay out of our hair. But, uh, so what I'm asking for is for permission for uh, uh, Bree Towers to uh, be released from school to attend college during the first semester. What's a, a full-time student, how long do they need to be there? Uh, do they have to be here the whole uh, day, the school day? For full-time. For yeah. full-time. If, if so the student is not here for the full day, it's just a percentage. So we have seven periods during the day. If she's here for five, it would be five sevenths. Be Unless it's second semester, then it doesn't matter. Right. right. And we're both in the second semester or the first, first, first semester. semester. So she would be counted as you know, partial. So we would be you know, losing a little bit of revenue. Yeah. Well, I commend her for you know, her endeavor. We've had revenue off her for years. So, in the when you do your board policy, are you going to make it um, every student request is not? I mean, somehow worded that it has to be brought to the board. I think it would be just like this. We may not need to change policy. We just have students come kind of ask for an exception to the policy and base that on their performance. Yeah, we did this with ECA. Similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Type of situation. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, we do have some kids going to Barton for automotive. Uh, we're going to transport them. We're going to count them. They're going to get St. John High School credit as well as Barton credit. Um, and if we count them as a student, we need to transport them. We just can't do that for every situation. Mm -hmm. If, if we could work it into a dual credit situation and transport the student, uh, we could do that. But we really need to keep it very limited on what we do there because we just can't transport any time of day. So did you say this is limited to the seniors? Uh, the senior release 
the policy the work release, work release seniors, that's second is, semester is senior senior year. to seniors. Sounds like Barb, I wouldn't want us to do a lot of this, but it's a bad case. <coughs> and we could clean up policy and put well, some stipulations. Yeah. 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 Oh wait, each case is individually looked at yeah. and yeah. we don't have to say that everybody's going to be, right. you know, I don't mind granting her. I think it's great that she's excelling and she's probably yeah. pursuing whatever her, and so, but I just don't want to. But she gets good grades. Mm -hmm. Is the motion uh, a motion to uh, uh, approve the release from from school for Bree uh, Bree Towers uh, for during the first semester for college courses? For college courses. Not that. Yeah. Do you want her name in the minutes? Yes. Okay. I would move. I would move that. Okay. Okay. So I got it. <laughs> second. Move second to approve the senior release for retires first semester to finish college courses on higher six and seven. Any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion to hear you six oh. Communications. Board member activities. Sam? Pretty quiet. Lance? Um, report. How about you, Barb? Uh, can't think of anything. Yeah, Someone moved. Took a tour of the school, praying that it gets done. Tom? Lance and I earlier this evening attended the library. <laughs> and yeah. to your things. <laughs> there's really nothing to report other than what uh, Christy reported. So. Okay. Okay. Going good, huh? the, the library has, uh, she said they had an uh, increased attendance and uh, for this year, you know, they keep track of non-patrons, non or students and patrons. Mm -hmm. And there was increased, there was increased traffic, and uh, she does a lot of several things. I couldn't run all the time. Okay. Thank you. Carl? No, I didn't have anything. And I don't have anything to report to so I, I got one. I, Thanks. I went to enrollment, and I thought the staff did well getting people through. Good job to them. Good. Okay, administrative reports. <laughs> I didn't have these guys put together a report for okay. the packet, so I can give you numbers it. if you want numbers. There you go. Uh, yeah. We don't have uh, 7 through 12. Uh, I just joked. We have um, two students who are seniors that are going to be uh, they're going to be going to the learning center um, instead of our school. Uh, we have uh, two students that have transferred to other schools, and then we have eight new students, two eighth graders, two seventh graders, a ninth grader, eleventh grader, and two seniors. So uh, that gives us a count right now of 9 through 12 at 109, 7th and 8th, 48, for a total of 157, 7 through 12. What's up? We have 157 is about what we had last year, oh, yeah. but we had um, we have a, had a bigger class. Uh, we had 23 seniors graduate, and then the freshman class that came, the eighth graders that became freshmen had three more than were graduated at 26. Freshmen has 26, sophomores have 34 in their class, juniors have 21, and the seniors are 28 right now. So 109 last year. I think we sent in on count day for classification. I think we sent in 107. So, I mean, we'll be 2A, which doesn't matter to me, but we'll be 2A uh, as far as classification goes. So, it's just some early numbers here. We'll see what happens, but that's pretty much what we yeah. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Sure. Mr. Um, I don't have the total numbers. I do know that from last year we had 
five students um, which that we know for sure are leaving the district um, at various grade levels, but we've also gained eight new from last year. So um, it's looking like our fourth grade class will be the biggest. Actually, I, I believe first and fourth grade will both have 25 in them. Um, but I had enrollment last Thursday. A uh, new staff will start Friday, and then everybody's back next Monday. Move in, y'all. So those two that transferred, is it because they moved or they just chose to go to a neighboring school? Oh, one went to Hutchinson and one went to Yates Center. Oh, no, uh, so. Yeah, Levi Cooper, he went back to live with his mom in Yates Center. So. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, another student who was, had only been here for a year went back to where he came from. So. Yeah. Mr. Uh, yeah, our, um, you mentioned the, uh, the ag classes we have coming to um, St. John High School. I didn't mention it yet. I was going to mention Which hour? Plant and animal science. Yeah, second hour. Mm -hmm. yeah, Plant and animal science. Uh, so we yeah, one semester eight, seven one. kids signed up for those. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we get actually eight now. Eight now. We will be purchasing the textbooks for that uh, class. Uh, much like we do college algebra, we'll keep those uh, to use for future years. Uh, automotive classes, we've got some kids going up for that. Okay. We'll be working out transportation to get them to and from. Five or six, the state uh, provides money for transportation. They'll reimburse us for that. Of course, they tell us they'll provide X number of dollars, and it's 60% uh, of that in the end. Uh, they prorate it because they don't have enough money. But, uh, I'm sure it will be that way again this year. But it, it covers the cost. Uh, so that's uh, good news for our kids. The band instruments, uh, we have a large inventory of band instruments. Uh, we need to get to the point, uh, my recommendation is to get to the point where we have fewer band instruments that we own. Uh, we were in a band instrument to a kid for $35. Uh, it means a lot more when my mom has to pay for that instrument and it's mine and I take better care of it. We spend a lot of money on repairs, uh, with band instruments. Um, uh, there's a company in Great Bend that does that since new music out of which time we that rents that. So um, in future years, I, I believe we need to whittle down our inventory and uh, have folks provide their own or rent from another company. Yeah. yeah, I'd say that's probably more typical uh, of an arrangement in the school district. You know, we're not going to require any kid to go buy a tuba. We're going to buy a tuba. For a <coughs> so how we address set. that? Will you, with Mr. Knight, maybe if you have a new crop of kids coming in and you pick so many instruments and say, maybe lower the price of these and get them out the door, mm -hmm. so to speak? Yep. So to lower our inventory? Yes. Okay. The, these companies will buy used instruments as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But I would I would guess our you know, local patrons would, would, would purchase them. But uh, anyway, nothing, uh, nothing drastic happening right now. Just uh, that's where I believe we need to head. Work study and college courses, we kind of discussed that, what we're working on there. Um, I'm going to be part of the Council of Superintendents for uh, KSDE. I'll represent about five counties, uh, Stafford and Barton, Pawnee, Edwards, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, but there's meetings uh, six times a year, and I'll go to Topeka and uh, work with uh, the State Department of Education and uh, do my job to you know communicate with the counties, uh, the area superintendents about things that are going on, changes with uh, state education. So I was asked to serve on that, and with your blessing, I'd like to like to do that. Um, enrollment went well. We've already spoken about that. Uh, we had that in the cafeteria. It was a little warm because one of our AC units was powered off because of the construction. Uh, so it was a little warm, but uh, 
Uh, we plan to do it in there in future years. I think that's a better representation of what our district is than uh, the other entrance in that old gym. Uh, the construction update, um, I think they'll mostly be done by the end of this week. Uh, we've got a lot left to do on that high school side. Uh, they work pretty quick. Floors are done. They were hanging fixtures in there today. Uh, ceiling is, ceiling grid is in. That you got to put in the tile. Um, it goes fairly quickly. Uh, they got a lot cleaned up this weekend. Um, a few touch-ups in the other restrooms. You know, some transition between carpet and the hard floor. You know, minor things like that. Touch up some caulking and some grout. Uh, but the other three sets of restrooms are functional. Um, we're behind on getting some carpet uh, in the classrooms, uh, so we're kind of scrambling to get a couple of those classrooms put back together, a few of them. Um, so I feel pretty confident that they'll be 99% done by the end of this week. Uh, and maybe a couple of things to clean up. So, so we're just about there. Um, the HVAC here at the library was been slow in coming. Uh, this week, they will be in to uh, start work on the community room and the boiler. I'll start there. Uh, roof maintenance, we had some, uh, we had a crew in this week to work on uh, the shop area and then the hallway down that and uh, some touch-ups on the gym. Uh, and then we've got some warranty work on the new building uh, that has not been completed, but they've come out to assess that we've had some leaks there and that roof is still under warranty, so that should all be paid for. Um, we have to dispose of some property. Uh, we've got some chairs to get rid of, some TVs, tables, a lot of things like that that aren't major ticket items. Uh, if this board would be okay with that, the board needs to approve of everything we dispose of, our inventory. Uh, if I would just sell those, uh, advertise it to the district, to employees, maybe put it on Facebook, I'm talking like a lunch table, uh, a TV. If we just advertise it that way, then I'll bring that list of what we've sold to you at the next meeting or at a future meeting. Would you all be okay with that? Whatever's easiest. Ideally, I'd like to have a garage sale where we put a bunch of things together, but we got to move everything to a spot, and then sell, move it back. One time the yeah. school had an auction. Yes, mm -hmm. I would, it would be nice to do that. Maybe the foundation. Um, if we had 50 volunteers to put it all together, that would be the way to go. Mm -hmm. I say whatever is easiest for you guys. Is there a website that schools maybe put stuff on like that? And other schools What's snatch it up? Yeah, yeah. Purple, that's uh, awesome. You're not know, talking about a lot of money. No, less than $500 for anything. Oh, okay. yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. I think it's small ticket items that just need to go, and if nobody buys them, we're going to throw them away. Uh, last item would be Tiger Pride Night. I meant to bring you a schedule, but it was in the uh, newsletter. Um, uh, we'll start that at. Uh, at Five o'clock, we'll have the open house. Five to six thirty, we'll do a parent meetings, do our kindergarten open house. So from five to six thirty, people can come and go, meet the teachers, see the building. Uh, about six thirty, we'll meet up at the football field. If the weather's bad, we'll just do it in the, in the big gym. Uh, we're gonna have the kids race. Hopefully, get get every kid up there because they want a piece of candy for racing. Maybe win. You know. You know, say a welcome. I had welcome from administration and board of ed. So, uh, if uh, Chad said he just deferred to me to say welcome, but uh, I may introduce you all. Uh, I won't be maybe there. wave. Uh, so and then, speak. anybody would like to say welcome? Well, Bill so, said he was the 29th. Friday the, before he left. Friday the 29th. Bill Milton. Bill Milton. <laughs> I, I, I remember it right now. Put them on the 
<laughs> and we'll introduce the uh, cheerleaders and they'll do a performance and uh, like ask Mr. Knight if he could have the uh, anthem and fight song ready to go six days or seven days, the seventh day of school. Yeah. To, yeah, no problem. problem. Yeah. Let that out and he'll do it. <laughs> so, and then we'll introduce the players and then uh, have, have scrimmages after that. So the idea there is just to get, uh, get everybody excited about the new year, not just about the scrimmages, but everything. Will there be ice cream? There will be water now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to compete with someone. You know, I heard, I heard some good and bad about the ice cream and enrollment. Good, everybody loves the ice cream. Bad is the mother had to stand outside in the heat and get her kid eat the ice cream before he got in the car and it was getting me. <laughs> I heard that a lot of people liked it. They were surprised. Very long unless what are, what are you, uh, personnel for uh, contracts. Junior high football coach is a bus driver in our life after school program. So, so you need a motion. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say three. <laughs> uh, we can do three. Ten. 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 This is your app. Okay. <laughs> Let you know. Okay. Mr. President, I move the board go into executive session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect privacy and non elected personnel with Mr. Meyer and Mr. Bergen to be included in that. We return to open session in 10, 15 minutes. Second. Move and second him. Go to executive session to discuss personal matters in order to pick a price in our local personnel with the board, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Bergen. And then uh, we'll return to the session in 15 minutes. All favor, aye. 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 Move and second him to hire Pope Kinnaman as the head junior high football coach. Aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. 5 to 1. Uh, Zach Mason for assistant junior high football. Mr. President, I move that we hire Zach Mason as junior high football assistant. Second. Move and seconded to hire Zach Mason as the assistant junior high football coach. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries, 6 0. Um, approve Ron Scott as a bus driver if uh, you're pending uh, proper licensing. Motion? I'll make the motion to approve Ron Scott pending licensing. Second. Ron Scott. Move and second is to hire Rob Scott pending licensing as a bus driver. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Uh, to approve Cindy Allen as a para with the Life After School Program. I move to approve Cindy Allen as a para with the Life After School Program. Second. second. Oh. You got me. Okay. You got me. You got me. Move and second to approve Cindy Allen as para for the after life school program. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Okay, you see um, your agenda there, future agenda items. Any questions? Can you take B Yep. Yep. Staff handbooks to school facilities, preliminary enrollment report. Approve those changes to policy that we're all going to read. 
next month. And we do site council membership. So are they going to be on a rotation, site council? Um, right now we're just taking whoever wants to. So if, uh, if we get to a point where we have too many people, then we'll put it on a rotation. For now, it's going to be a part of it. Come on. Anything else come for the board? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. And second to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carries.